In this video, we will go over the 17 things you need to know about Castro Valley before moving here. Hey guys, my name is Mac Rogers. I'm a real estate broker here in the East Bay. Welcome to the channel. Let's make this a countdown and start with number 17. Number 17, location. Now, you might think it's funny, but a lot of people in the Bay Area don't know where Castro Valley is. The response that I often get is, oh, you live in the city, meaning San Francisco. No, that is the Castro District. Another thing that I've heard from people is that, oh, it's the artichoke center of the world. First time I heard that, you know, I had to look it up. No, that's Castroville in Monterey Bay. Castro Valley is considered a suburb of Oakland. We are about 30 minutes from downtown San Francisco and pretty much within 30 minutes to 45 minutes of most major business hubs like the Peninsula, Silicon Valley, etc. Other well, more well-known neighboring cities bordering Castro Valley are Hayward, San Leandro, Oakland, Dublin, and San Ramon. Next, number 16 is weather. You know, there's a joke in the California real estate community that the reason California is expensive is because we have a weather tax. Weather tax is in full effect here in Castro Valley. Climate is mild. Basically in the summer when there's a heat wave, it doesn't last that long. It could be two to three days is what I have experienced in the last 19 years that we've lived here. The rest of the East Bay lasts longer and hotter. Average temperature is around 76. Now that is the average, but I've seen temperatures that goes um, all the way up to the 100, but it doesn't happen that often and it doesn't last long. Around July is the hottest period. And winters are not that cold. Average temperature is around 42 degrees, with January being the coldest month. Snow, no snow at all. So year round, the climate is good. Personally, I would like it much warmer. My wife likes it perfect. Happy wife, happy life. Number 15, school. Castro Valley has a great school district. Several of its schools are recognized as distinguished California schools. If you have elementary aged kids, be careful as not all of Castro Valley goes to the Castro Valley School District or the schools are not that ranked well. So be mindful of that. Just because you buy a house in Castro Valley doesn't mean you belong to a good elementary school. You might want to check out greatschools.org or better yet, call the district. In general, homes around the border of Hayward, San Leandro are the homes that, would, that I would double check which school it belongs to. For middle schools, there are two choices and both are good, Creekside and Canyon. High school, only one choice. Castro Valley High and that's also good. Number 14, food. If you've watched my other videos, you should know that this is one of the things that Castro Valley um, is lacking. 19 years ago when we moved here uh, from Millbrae, it was a big downer. I mean, the selection was lacking. Now I'm happy to say that it's improving. The new Castro Valley market, that's a big plus. Uh, there are certainly more choices than ever. I mean, you won't find any Michelin star restaurant or restaurants that out-of-towners are coming in to visit but from my point of view or perspective from being a 19-year resident here it's definitely a lot better number 13 political views boy there's a hot topic right there right according to bestplaces.com castro valley is moderately liberal i think this is true with the people that i know and have bumped into castro valley i actually think that it might be 50 50. now where it goes crazy is social media. So long as you stay away from Facebook and other social media sites on the topic of politics, that's that's usually where the cray cray people are. Usually it's where the name calling and all the self-righteousness is all out. Number 12, this is a town, not a city. Castro Valley is unincorporated. What this means for you as a resident or a prospective resident, nothing really. You just need to know that the county of Alameda governs the town directly. We don't have a mayor. We don't have a police department. That's right, try defunding that. Policing is done by the Alameda County Sheriff Department and the California Highway Patrol. Love you guys. Thank you for keeping us safe. Number 11, we have a Nike site. There is a Nike site in Lake Chabot. And no, I'm not talking about the Just Do It Nike. Talking about the Nike Ajax multi-stage surface-to-air missiles. Just, just like this one. This was established back in 1955 as part of the San Francisco defense site. The site was deactivated in 1974. If you want to know more about this, I will put a link to the military museum um, right at the description below. But can you imagine living that time here in Castro Valley, knowing that 
you have a missile defense system right at your backyard? That would scare me. That would make Castro Valley a target for the enemies. Boy, I'm glad that's gone. Number 10. Part of Castro Valley was once owned by Faxon Atherton. Castro Valley was named after Don Guillermo Castro, a soldier in the Mexican army. Don Castro was a gambler and he eventually had to start selling off his land to pay off his gambling debts. The last of his holdings was sold to none other than Faxon Atherton. Yes, that is the same Atherton for which the name of the town of Atherton, one of the most expensive zip code in the nation, if not the most expensive. Castro Valley is certainly expensive, but not sky-high Atherton expensive. But it's nice to know that there's a connection. Number nine, chicken coop. Castro Valley was once known for its chicken coop. There were a lot of ranchers in the area in the beginning, and that was a big thing back then. Nowadays, I don't see any more chicken farms around. Although, I have to say, just last week, I saw a couple of chickens walking the streets of five canyons of all places. Go figure. Number eight, Castro Valley is very pet friendly. Although there's only one dog park in the area, there are a lot of homeowners that have pets, especially dogs. And they are, or I should say, we care about our pets, whether it's a dog, a cat, whatever. As a matter of fact, as soon as a pet is missing, you will find it posted on nextdoor.com and people do keep an eye out and help locate or reunite pets with their human. Just a quick note to dog owners, please pick up your dog's poop, okay? Can't do that, might as well give him away. Number seven, the rodeo comes to town once a year. Well, that was before the virus hit us. It used to be around the third weekend of May. There's a parade in downtown Castro Valley or Castro Valley Boulevard, as well as a chili cook-off when the rodeo is in town. It was fun. This is something that hopefully does not end. The ranch is located on Dublin grade going towards Dublin. They also have a pumpkin patch as well as a Christmas tree farm in November and December. Number six, residents complain about the number of fast food restaurants here. I mean, again, on social media, sometimes that thread would go on for days about fast food chain. We do have a lot of fast food here. In fact, we have two McDonald's. For a small town, I think that's too, too many. We also have Jack, Wendy, The King, that authentic Mexican place called Taco Bell, also that authentic American Chinese restaurant called Panda Express. Now, I don't have anything against them. I've eaten all of them. And it's just for you to know. Number five, staying on the topic of food, we also have a number of breakfast or brunch places. From Doug's to Denica's to Southern Comfort to Norman's Grill, it's nice to have you have plenty of choices. Number four, Castro Valley definitely has a small town vibe compared to its neighboring cities like Dublin, Hayward, San Leandro. Now, I wouldn't exactly call it small town America. It's nice when you meet or read in the local paper about longtime residents or second or third generation residents that still live in town. To me, there's just something special about that. America being the land of uh, immigrants, I'm an immigrant myself, but I love meeting the people and hearing their story, their first-hand account of what life was like in the old days. Number three, there's lots of traffic in Castro Valley. I'm talking about street traffic. The local streets get so backed up during rush hour as people from different neighboring cities would use our streets as shortcuts or trying to avoid freeway traffic. You know, you can go to Oakland the back way or Alamo or Danville via Crow Canyon. There's lots of ways to avoid traffic using local Castro Valley streets. It's really annoying. Number two, you can do staycation here. That's right, I said staycation. And I'm not talking about go, going out into the neighboring cities. I'm talking about just staying right here in good old Castro Valley. Can you do? Well, in the morning, you can go to Lake Chabot and hike around the lake or go fishing or boating. After that, you can have a brunch in you know, the, any of the restaurants that I mentioned or go to the new Castro Valley Marketplace. For the afternoon, you can go to Cal Canyon for a swim in the lagoon. That's in the summer, by the way. Then you can go wine tasting. That's right, wine tasting. We have not one, not two, but three in Castro Valley. How many does your town have? Livermore, I'm not talking to you. You can check out Twining Vine on uh, Cal Canyon, then go to uh, Palomares Road and hit the uh, Chenard Winery and end at Westover. If you're lucky, you might bump into Bill, the owner of Westover. Speaking of locals, their family goes way back several generations in this area. And finally, number 17, 
it's not Hayward. That's all I have to say about that. Look, there's certainly a lot of things you need to know about a neighborhood or a city before moving. Whether it's Castro Valley or any city in the East Bay, we can and we would love to help you out. Whether you're buying or selling, give us a call, send us a text message, an email, and let us partner with you on your next chapter. Check out the rest of our videos.